In this video, we are going to explain what it is, how it is done, and how to interpret a simple spirometry test. Etymologically, the word comes from the Latin spirare, to blow, and the Greek metria, to measure. Therefore, it is a test that measures the volume of air that the patient is mobilizing in each inspiration and expiration. The procedure is not invasive and makes it possible to diagnose respiratory diseases as well as to evaluate the effectiveness of a treatment. On the x-axis we have the time in seconds and on the y-axis we represent the volume of air in the lungs measured in liters. We begin by asking the patient to breathe in and out normally and the volume of air entering and leaving the lungs will be recorded. Next, we ask the patient to take a deep breath and then expel all the air, trying to empty their lungs. Afterwards, the patient can continue to breathe normally. The volume of air mobilized in each relaxed ventilation cycle is the tidal volume, which is usually 0.5 liters. The maximum volume of air the patient can inhale is the inspiratory reserve volume, which is usually around 3 liters. The volume of air the patient exhales after a deep inspiration is the expiratory reserve volume, which is approximately 1 liter. These values apply to the standard subject in physiology. If we add the inspiratory reserve volume plus the tidal volume, we will have the inspiratory capacity. If we add the three volumes, we will have the vital capacity. There is a volume of air that always remains in the lungs after a forced expiration, because the lungs are not collapsed. This is the residual volume and cannot be measured by spirometry. It is usually 1.2 liters. The total lung capacity is the sum of the vital capacity plus the residual volume. The vital capacity is usually 4.5 liters depending on the characteristics of the patient. It is affected by age, weight, height, sex, ethnicity, or if the patient is a smoker. Based on these characteristics, the computer program calculates the vital capacity for that specific patient, that is, his or her ideal vital capacity. If the spirometry result indicates a vital capacity equal to or greater than 80% of the ideal vital capacity, the result is physiological. Now let's see it with a real example. Good morning. The first thing we do is write down the patient's data. Now I'm going to explain the test to you. We have to explain what the test consists of to the patient and give them the following instructions. You must be sitting up straight. You must not wear a belt or a tight bra. You must not have taken medication that affects ventilatory mechanics in the six hours prior to the test. You must not have smoked or consumed caffeine or something similar in the last few hours. The patient is warned that they will receive orders vigorously. The clip is placed on the nose to prevent the entry or exit of air through this way. The nozzle is placed in the spirometer and then the patient must put it in their mouth in such a way that they don't draw air through the corners of their lips. Breathe in and out normally. Excellent. Here we have the tidal volume. In the next cycle, you are going to inhale all the air you can. Come on. Take a deep breath as much as you can. More, 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 more. Okay, and now breathe out. More, 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 more. Empty your lungs. Well done. At the end of the test, the program offers us the results. 
The ideal vital capacity for this patient, calculated according to the parameters introduced in the program, is 3.76 litres. She managed to mobilise 3.58 litres in the real test, which is 95% of the ideal value. Therefore, the result is physiological.